Hi everybody, it is April and I'm in my craft room and today we're going to do an experiment. I ran across this bag of jelly roll strips and I thought, well, you know, these are two and a half inch strips. They go from light to dark. I could do something with those. And the bright idea popped into my head. I thought, well, I'll just sew some of these together and then put it on some white background. So I sewed like a jelly roll race strip and I didn't know exactly how to take this and this and get rid of this and come up with this. <laughs> so I kind of want it to look scrappy, but not necessarily be scrappy. Well, then I thought, you know what? I'm just going to take my blue and white strips. I'm going to sew them on a block and then I'm going to arrange them on my wall because who doesn't love a blue and white quilt? So this is going to be controlled scrappy. Let's see how it turns out. We don't have to cut the blue and white fabric because it's already jelly roll. So I have a stack of a basic gray white grunge fabric here and I am cutting it into 12 and a half inch squares. So I've already cut the 12 inch strips and now I am just cutting my squares. One good thing about the way that I'm doing this is if your block isn't perfectly straight on the edges, it's okay because half of that block you're covering up with other fabric anyway. I have a four blocks by five blocks quilt in mind. We'll see if that's what it actually comes out to. So I am going to cut, I think 21 blocks because that's how many strips I cut. The good thing about white is I can always use it somewhere else if I don't use it here. If you haven't run across a pack full of jelly roll strips, then you might want to just pull some fabric from your stash and use it because I seriously considered doing this. This is from Dan Morris Designs QT Fabrics and they are, this is one of my favorite collections. It's just a bunch of paint splatters, paint swishes, paisleys mixed in. I mean, this is my kind of fabric right here. So if I get bored with the blue and white, I could always cut this up. With Scrappy, if you get bored easily, the smaller the strips, the longer it takes. So the two and a half inch strips, those are going really fast. So let me take you to the sewing machine. I will show you what I am doing with my white and blue strips. One thing I am doing is for this first strip, I am actually pinning so that when I fold it back, it really is on the point. We'll start from the beginning. Again, I'm just doing half. So I want to go from corner to corner, but I want my stitch line to be on the line that's from corner to corner. And I am using a quarter inch seam. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go past my point just a little, you know, a quarter of an inch. And in order to keep my fabric from moving around, I'm going to put a pin in it. I know who thought I would say that, but I, I am. Oh, another thing that I want to do is not waste fabric any more than I already am. So I'm going to bring this down to the beginning of the jelly roll strip and flip it up. I'd say that's about a quarter of an inch and pin it. 
All right, and then it runs to the same place on the other corner. Flip it up. I want a quarter of an inch, and I'm going to pin this end. As long as I have these two points pinned, I'm in good shape. I found that if I didn't pin it, well, you know, it didn't always come on the point. So I start out with my 12 inch square. I'm going dark to light this time. So I put my dark fabric, here's another kind of dark, and I'm just gonna line it up with these pinked edges together. And like I said, with the two and a half inch, this goes really quick. Now something I just thought of, so I've got these orphan pieces of fabric. Maybe when I get closer to the edge like this, I could use these pieces. I don't know. I almost have to start at this edge and then fold it out, which actually this might be okay. I'm trying to figure out how I can incorporate these, but these two are the same color. So I'll wait, although hold on, hold on. I've got another one. Let's see. And since this is smaller because it's coming to a point, I need less fabric. This might actually work. So let me try this and see if I can salvage some of my experiments. And I didn't mention, but once I get past that first seam, I don't need the pins anymore. Okay, cool. Now, one other thing, flip this over. Elmer's glue washes away. So what I've been doing is just putting some of the, bl the glue, the blue glue, putting some of the blue on the fabric and that should hold my point down. And actually, I can do this and that. So we'll see how that works. Here, I have my block. All I need to do is trim it. And I like to take it over to the cutting table to do that so that I don't accidentally cut my block. So let me sew a few more of these together and let's see what kind of designs we can make on the design wall. Here I have four across One, two, three, four, and five down. So I have 20 blocks and I have sewn strips on half of a white 12 by 12 block. Now I have to decide how to organize them. So here I have diamonds and I do have a secondary pattern. <laughs> I just noticed that of an arrow. So that's kind of cool. Now, what other ways can we organize these blocks to get different designs. Let's find out. Something else you can do, a chevron. Pretty cool, huh? And yet another way, stripes. Pretty cool, huh? And here, the white diamonds are in the center and there are the secondary diamonds here. And then you've got arrows. There are just so many things that you can do with half square triangles. Now I just have to figure out which one I want to use. So when you're working on a quilt, say it's your own design and you like it, but it's missing something or you think that it was supposed to look differently than what it does. So in your mind, you had this vision and that 
isn't what your quilt is turning out to be. Well, you need a reset. So just push the reset button, turn everything off and walk away. That's what I'm going to do right now. Well, actually I did it last night. So I left the design on the wall with my quilt and it was either this morning or last night. I had two revelations actually last night, first revelation. I need five more blocks down the side because it's too skinny. Cool. Second revelation. I need something else on the block. And then it hit me. So my first design came from Kathy Kay and I actually have that down, but my blocks are bigger than hers. And with that bigger block comes more white space. So I have an idea. So I need five and I'm going to cut out actually six because I have two strips of fabric. Now I'm going to make five more blocks and look what I figured out. I can chain piece. So here I have done multiple squares and they're chain pieced. So I folded this first strip over going to lay the second strip down, make sure it's lined up. Then I will just overlap these and away I go. And there I have my blocks. One, ah, two, three, four. So I just snip them apart and do the next layer or the next strip, I should say. Easy peasy. Okay. So I added that row. I'm very happy with that. It's going to be square. That's okay. Now there's one more thing that I want to add and I think it's just going to make the quilt. So let me go do that and I'll be right back. How awesome does that look? You don't have to make sure these are all the same size. I just put a strip on there. I didn't measure nothing. And it just adds that pop in the middle. This, it just looks like it's missing something this I really like. So I am going to add the strip to all the rest and then we'll meet back here. I think there's one more thing that we want to do. My quilt top is complete. Well, almost complete, but we'll talk about that in a minute. First, I want to do a shout out to Joe and Amanda for buying me coffee. Thank you so much. I do enjoy my caffeine. Loving how this turned out. I think adding this little bitty pop of color in the middle was the right way to go. And ends up that Kathy Kay, her scrappy quilt, they were squares too. So I don't know why I remembered it as stars, but anyway, so hers is similar, but she makes her blocks smaller. And I will throw a picture in here to show you what hers looks like. I like the controlled scrappy. I like having more of a cohesive look. I like the scrappy too, but I'm all matchy matchy stuff. So 
this is right up my alley. And if you have a collection that you want to use and do something different with, especially jelly rolls, those pre-cuts made it a whole lot easier to go quickly. Now, I didn't get around to this to using this fabric collection, but I will. I think I might try something different. So I've done stars and I've done diamonds or squares. So who knows what I can come up with next. Now, finishing touches, a border. We have options. First of all, this is actually a Pioneer Woman fabric. And I used a couple pieces of it in my quilt here and here. So I thought maybe this would be a cool border. You'll have to let me know what you think. This is an option. Another option is to use a solid first and then add that floral border. So I have this option, not loving it. I thought maybe the lighter color, I mean, it's okay. Let me know what you think. So we'll, we'll call this option two with the floral being option one. And here is a darker blue. I don't know. I really am having trouble deciding. So let me know, do you like the darker blue or the lighter blue? And should I put the solid border before I put a floral border? Let's see, let's try and do this. There's the lighter. Let's do the darker. I may like the darker. I just don't know. Maybe I should put a white and then put this. Just let me know your opinions in the comments. I know I love to give my opinion. I would love to hear your opinions as well. Thank you for watching. Have a great day, eat some chocolate, and be kind to everyone. Until next time. You know, I got bored with it, so I hope that didn't land in the fireplace. <laughs> Just a minute. If you're long. Okay, I need some long strips.